Welcome back to another BS Hour with your anime degens. Unfortunately, it is just me and Dan here. We're, we are still missing our boy Tyler, but he will be back soon. Still miss you, buddy. Wish you were here. Um, on today's episode, we have two, I think, very interesting, if not a little, little crazy, sections. Uh, first, we're going to do a celebration of National Wife Day, which is the third Sunday of each oh, of uh, every September. And this this year it was September 17th. And then next we're going to do our most hard boiled anime characters. If you've watched One Piece, you know exactly what this means. And if you haven't, we'll explain it to you. Dan, how you doing, my guy? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Do definitely wish Tyler was here. I think he had some really really fun characters to discuss today but we'll go through his first list he i don't think he ever actually got a second list on there for his hard-boiled boys <laughs> yeah i really i feel like this is like his his episode always like he always does like he always makes me laugh um, i mean he comes up with some great ideas i already know who his most hard-boiled character is and it's minato and number two is I mean, kampachi yeah. so we got it okay all right <laughs> Um, did you have any news for the people? Yeah, not a lot of news this week. You know, I, uh, you know, to if you guys are ever looking for anime news, Anime News Network is a great place to go. Uh, a lot of the news this week was just release dates for shows. Some mangas are ending, some mangas are starting, you know, the normal stuff. But it was announced that the One Piece live action is getting a season two. And the heads of the show have a plan for up to 12 seasons. So I'm really fucking confused how they're going to keep Inaki looking like Luffy for t 12 to 15 years. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure how they're going to pull that off. I but mean, like, with two money, years anything's skip. possible. A two year time skip does not make up for 15 years of aging, man. <laughs> But oh, awesome. we shall gonna... see. I'm ex I mean, I'm excited uh, about the season two. But yeah, let's jump right into it. So the first section, the actual name of it is National Waifu Day. Ah, we're so clever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, we're gonna, we're, uh, so in honor of uh, National Wife Day here in the United States, uh, we're going to respectfully talk about some of our favorite anime waifus. Uh, but I think you guys really just know how this is going to go. But with that being said, and I'm going to let you start this off. Set the tone. Well, uh, I'm going to throw those words respectfully out the window. Um, oh, no. So as you guys who have listened to the podcast know, uh, Dan has a type. And Tyler took my number one big baddie off the list. So since he's not here, I'm just going to say as death, the queen of mommy's step on me energy is on his list, and she would also be number one on mine. If you guys haven't watched Agame Got Killed, she is a treat. And she's scary, <laughs> and I like that. But, so for my first one, I'm taking the runner-up of Mommy Step On Me Energy. This is Hibana from Fire Force. If you guys haven't watched Fire Force, she is a company leader. And let me tell you, she could step on me all day. There are multiple scenes where she is stepping on her subordinates, telling them to grovel for her. And let me tell you guys, that is that is yeah, a she right. might have got me. She might have got me one That's, one or two times. Oh, right on my alley. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, Hibana, she is a dummy thick. But she's also a great character. Like in Fire Force, you see this side of her. But I'm not going to spoil too much. They go into a lot into her backstory and how she became the way she is. Um, she obviously had a very rough upbringing as a, a nun in this crazy ass world of Fire Force. And she was a very, very strong pyrokinetic. She was a third gen and she had the ability to conjure like these beautiful flame flowers, which are really cool to see. But she's she's wicked fucking smart, as we like to say in my neighboring city of Boston. And she works for Hijima on the side, doing a lot of research on the Infernals. So, yes, she's, with her. Uh, she, she's a smart girl. Um, 
And I, I'm I'm a little jealous. Uh, I was going to put her as my honorable mention for this, but she could have gone for my top one here. Habana's a baddie, hundred percent. I should have just taken as Steph because Tyler's not here. Would have made my day a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if I was to waifu her up and make her make her my wife. I could quit my job because she's got racks coming in from Hajima. So that right there puts her number one in my she's book. Got long money. Yeah. I respect that. You know, I've said this maybe at the beginning of our podcast. You guys might be new and that might not know. But you know, one of my major goals in life is to find a sugar mama. And Hibana can do that. Hibana could. And she's looking a lot better than most of the sugar mamas you're gonna find. And nowadays they're bass. I mean, yeah, I, I I got my demographic, but I love them. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Old, divorced, and sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Experienced seasons, my boy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll go ahead and rattle off my one. And I had to get this one in early because I know the boys were going to be after. Her. Um, <clears throat> if you played Jeopardy with us a, a few weeks ago, you already know what's up. It's my girl, Nico Robin from One Piece. Um, I literally just finished watching the Water 7 in any uh, in these lobbies arcs because, one, it's it's some of the best One Piece there is. But really, I watched the whole thing uh, wanting to get to the point where Nico Robin says, I want to live. Uh, such an impactful moment. I think the first time I actually watched it, Dan, I, I stood up uh, out of my chair. I was like, finally, finally. But getting back to Nico herself, absolute baddie, dark sense of humor. I love just a wicked dark sense of humor. And she does it with a straight face. Uh, I do this all the time to my close friends. And I want to leave them guessing, was he actually joking? Nico Robin does this to the Straw Hats all the time. And it's some of the best comedy in the, uh, the show to me. But... You know, she's a baddie, but she's also mad strong. Um, I think people forget that sometimes, how, just how broken her uh, devil fruit can be. And uh, but there, there's there's no cheating on Robin. Not that I would, but uh, because she can better she, not. Yeah, no, no. She's got a, a thousand hands and I'd rather have those helping than hurting me. In most situations. Dude, can you imagine how good like of a massage Robin could give you? She'd be hitting I mean, every muscle at once. The best massage. The best massage. But, yeah, I mean, basically, you know, the whole world government wants her. Why wouldn't you? you know I'm saying she's a hot commodity. You're not wrong, dude. And I <laughs> forget what movie it's in, but there is a scene where she stomps on a lot of guys with some gigantigos or what the fuck she calls it, but the big old, mm. big old steppers. She's got some massive feet and she comes down on a lot of guys. And all I can think of is there's a meme that was going around for a long time. And it was like that scene. But then you had, um, oh shit, Bruno Mars. <laughs> it's like from a Bruno Mars video. And you just see him okay. looking up with the biggest smile on his face. And they put that after that. I scene. sent you that meme. I sent you that meme. And I said, oh, it should have been me. <laughs> It just it's going back to that Yu-Gi-Oh! meme where it's just him and the god, it should have been me. <laughs> just like that, my boy. Um But yes, no, I was the person that showed you that meme, I believe. Um that that came out right after that, whatever episode that was, and I was like, I, I gotta send this to Dan. He's gonna absolutely love this. Um and I'm glad it stuck out in your memory and you're bringing it up now. Love I'm, that. I'm spending this entire segment talking about people who can step on me, so <laughs> there you go yeah she'd be damn good at it um but yeah that's that's my one it's somebody i i've always said as dan says can't step on me um she's awesome like and she's she's well-rounded she's super smart she's an archaeologist um she could read some ancient texts that nobody else can read smart strong bad what else you want i would like the lack of a bounty you know, I don't want to be running all day, but that's 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 the downside you got to deal with to be with a girl like Nico, you know? Worth it. <laughs> 100%, dude. 
So I guess before I'll get into my next one, I would like to uh, go into Tyler's next one. If you guys listen to podcasts, you obviously know who this is going to be. Yoruichi. You know, Tyler talks her up every single chance he gets. He's got a type and it involves purple hair. <laughs> hey, he like his dark skinned mama. So I respect that. I who doesn't like Yoruichi, dude? Especially with the, <laughs> We got a scene coming up. Coming up in the Thousand Year Blood War, which is gonna be, it's gonna take over the internet. Let me tell you that. It'll, it'll, uh, it's, it's gonna pop off. It's, it's gonna get a little, a uh, little electric, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. It's gonna be great. Um, and I feel like Tyler's gonna be talking about it for at least two to three weeks afterwards, and I will not blame him for doing so. Oh, not at all. But so for my next one, uh, I had to do a little Google search to make sure uh, some criteria was met. Keyword uh, 18 and up. Because, you know, I'm not that kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> but so for okay. my next one, I'm picking Sasuke Kirwin from Kill a Kill. And again, we are going on a trend here. Power is fucking sexy, boys. Yes. And she is a powerful lady. She knows what she wants. She will use whoever it takes to get there. She is also a disciple of the mommy step on me energy. When she is in Junkets with her life fiber mode activated, those heals could do some damage to me, but I think I let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, when I first started watching this and, uh, you said, you, I think you told me that, um, I would like a certain someone in this. And I was like, that's her. I knew who it was immediately. I was like, okay, here we go. Power yep. sexy. Power sexy boys. And it helps when you put in a little sailor suit. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even need it though. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it was, it's a good look. Yeah. Um, uh, kill a kill is, is it was a little heavy on the, the fan service for me, but I definitely did enjoy, uh, that Yuki. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really, I really, mean, it's really good stuff. We're probably the only etchy show I've ever really watched. Usually I stay away from that genre, but they do a really good job with it and they make it part of the plot. It's not just there to be there, you know? That, they did do that. That's very fair. That's very fair. But her character growth in the show is awesome. Uh, you get the classic big baddie turns into a good character down the line. Love that. And there's just a quote from her that just sits with me and just shows how powerful of a character she is. And it's, ask not the sparrow how the eagle soars. So that's just how she looks down on everybody. And she can look down on me anytime. Talk to him, big dog. <laughs> she has some really great, I can't remember anything off the top of my head, but she has some really great quotes. Um... And like it was one of the first things that was said in the anime. I cannot remember what it was, but it was straight gas. And I was like, okay, I like you. You're cool. But yeah, she she's her quotes are top tier. Oh, I mean, she's running a fascist dictatorship over students, dude. She's a bad true. bitch. True, true, true. But uh I'll go ahead and pop off with my next one. Um th this this lady took my my heart when I was about maybe uh Nine or ten years old, I believe. Um, could have been younger than that. Uh, um, Faye Valentine from Cowboy Bebop. You guys know I love Cowboy Bebop characters, but Faye, I remember the first time you see her in the anime. Little ten year old Bass didn't know what was going on with him, but uh, first time you see her, she has a man at a bar light a cigar for her. Has some cool ass shades on in her normal little outfit and pulls out the SMG, loads the mag and starts blasting. I was like, she's so fucking cool. Um, but yeah, I, I preteen pre bass was definitely in love at first sight. Uh, so I had, I had to put her on here. Um, I think my, my taste in women has changed overall. Uh, but <laughs> she is a fine wine, dude. She gets better she with every watch. Yes, the, the the things do thing in in the whole show, but yeah, I also like her as like a, a character too. To be honest, she uh, loves the gamble. I, I, I'm not a huge gambler, but I get down sometimes. Um, and she's an opportunistic, absolute savage, 
Only thing is she's not very trusting. But um, she fits the profile, unfortunately. But uh, she also, you know, she also learned later in the show to care about the people around her. So I like kind of how they rounded out her character in the show. But Faye Valentine, just wonderful character. Great gal. Great gal. And absolutely beautiful. Legs like the Eiffel Tower. And dude, that one scene where she's sunbathing on the front of the ship, money. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And like uh Ed comes up and like lays her lays her head down on her leg. I'm like, Ed, you, you gotta get out of there, bud. That's my spot. <laughs> that's my <laughs> spot. <laughs> that's, that's where Bass's head goes. Get out of there, kid. <laughs> ten ten year old Bass was jealous. I, I I didn't know that feeling uh <laughs> quite yet. But I think that but was yeah. the first time. <laughs> jealousy <laughs> most people get jealous that somebody has a cool pokemon card as a kid and bass is like nope i saw ed's head on that lap and that's my spot <laughs> but i he was think, a young boy yeah i mean faye is just a character that in your older years you can come to appreciate so much more not yes. just because like she's bad but like you actually understand her character development i mean like understanding some of the deeper themes of cowboy bebop when you're like eight or nine kind of challenging no like you're just there because you think uh uh spike is cool yeah and, and guns he are cool cigarettes and he goes bang He's right? literally and then and then like i said you have fake coming in smoking a cigar sunglasses on pulling out the the blick you know so you like it for different reasons when you're young but like you said like i've probably watched it twice again as an adult and each time like it just grow the meaning of it grows more and more so, oh definitely hot lady Wait. great story boom that is that's kind of the gist of what we're getting at here today you know yes sir because like you can have hot characters like but they don't have as good of a story so they don't it doesn't sit as close to your heart you know exactly you might even forget about them every now and again but we do have some honorable mentions so Tyler's honorable mention, and he didn't give us much reason why, but I think we can all figure it out, is your from Spy Family. And that is another girl that I can get behind that. Yeah. No, and yours is just so cool. Like, I, I, I find, like, her and, like, her assassin life is so freaking cool, man. So I think that's a great honorable mention right there. And Spy yeah, Family and, is a good, a, a good anime. Fantastic. And you see, you see the other side of her, too, which... Knocks her down a few pegs in my book because I like yeah. that personality to be steadfast. <laughs> and speaking of women with steadfast personalities, my honorable mention, I'm going with Major Olivier Mira Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. She is a feisty lady. She is more of a man's man than most men in that show. But she bad. Honestly, that's that's true. But she's bad. Uh, yeah, like Miss uh, Oliver Armstrong is also one of the strongest characters uh, in, in the show. Uh, she runs a tight ship. A great major. A great major. Um, I, I could just see myself watching her come home from work every day and just beating me up because I haven't done the chores. <laughs> But you know you're going to have them chores done, boy. I, I would if she was in charge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, but uh, my honorable mention, we got to get through this, man. Um, I'm my, uh, uh, my honorable <laughs> mention is uh, Maki from Fire Force. I will, uh, first thing I'm going to say is fan service, how she gets done in the show, she deserves better. Our girl Maki deserves better than that. Uh, the show deserves better than that, in my opinion. Um, yeah, Maki's but, not the worst one. No, she isn't. No, that's the cat. Oh, that is right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the cat's the worst one. The yeah, lecture lure. that's true. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Maki's also strong as fuck. I think there's like a theme here with me and you, Dan. <laughs> Dan's just Maki, nodding his head. Y'all, 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 y'all can't, y'all can't see it, but he's nodding his head. He knows what's going on. Maki um, doesn't have that step on me energy that I need, though. You know. Have Have you seen her biceps, though? Yeah, but she's too nice. <laughs> she is very, very nice. She's too nice. She would never do I that. Mean, she's a little princess with all the muscles. 
Ah, oh, man. She, uh, we work it out but uh <laughs> <laughs> um she also is the best has the best fit in the show in my opinion um there's other better character designs but her fit is the is the most fire in my opinion the the whole witch but um tess okay okay <laughs> You just said her fit was fire, and it's a show called Oh my God, Fire Force. <laughs> it is a fire fit, though. It's her fire fighting fit. Um, but yeah, the the whole witch get up is cool. She's a, she's a, she's a nice she's a nice lady. Um, but yeah, I, I think she's she's a good character as well. And I just love Fire Force. I really enjoy it. I think I brought it up last uh, bullshit hour. The sound in it amaz- is amazing. Uh, Top tier sound great fights and yeah you guys should go watch it if you haven't i know a lot of people that have not and you need to go make sure you do yeah i think it's probably the most underrated new gen shonen show there is because not a lot of people are talking about it but like the plot's good there's one character who's really annoying but like there's a lot of great comedic relief in it yes and the fights go so fucking hard they're they're amazing and like if you have like decent speakers or like good headphones, holy smokes, guys! Like it's, the audio is just amazing, amazing. Oh. It's like on par, if not better than Naruto. Like they go fucking hard with the hand-to-hand combat. Yo, that's actually very true. Yeah, I- I'd put it up there with Naruto, hundred percent. A hundred percent. I'm thinking about I got I think I might just have to read the manga for that one, dude, because I can't keep waiting. They won't even give us a date yet. That season was announced like last year yeah. and I'm just pissed off. Yeah, man, we, we we need it. The streets are starving or at least I am. But and it's it's over with. So like I've already been spoiled on the end of it. The end is nuts. Like, yeah. Oh, man. No, I, I haven't. Uh, oh, I, I took that off my Twitter. I, I put the character names in because I really like the show. <laughs> I think it's harder for me to do that with One Piece because I like One Piece is like my show, right? But Fire Force, like I, I'm willing to just wait on the season um, because there's there's love there, but it's not overwhelming love. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ready for well, the next section, my my guy? Yeah, let's get into some of the most hard boiled anime characters, and we were taking this this definition a little loosely. We're talking about some mainly fucking men right here. We're going polar opposite of what we just talked about. And this is why we were sad Tyler's not here. But we already know his list. It's Minato. It's Kenpachi. We got it down to a science, guys. <laughs> we know him well. <laughs> so hard-boiled is a term for an incredibly manly man. Usually a bit dark, gritty, usually serious. Hard-boiled started as a term for those manly noir detectives like the actor Humphrey Bogart. He's in a lot of those old school classic detective movies back in the day. A man who follows his own code of manliness, honor, morality. Among the most hard-boiled anime characters known to men are Senor Pink from One Piece. He's so fucking hard-boiled. Every lady in that island knows. Yes, yes. And I think when I watched One Piece, I was so fucking confused by this. I didn't know what hard boiled men at the time. Um, I think after a few episodes of hearing about Senior Pink, I had to uh, go figure that out. Oh, definitely. Up, man. But the reason I brought this up, like we should definitely do this, is I'm watching Gintama and there is a total meme detective character who calls himself the hard boiled detective. His name is Kozenigata Heji. And the arc with him is absolutely hilarious. And of course, you cannot forget the manliest man known to man, Kenshiro from Fist of the North Star. If you guys haven't watched that, it's an absolute classic. So we're going to get into some of the manliest men that we can think of who follow their own code. Bass, you want to get started? Yeah, I'm going to get us started with uh, Thorkill the Tall. Um, He is, I think, a top three or four character in Vinland Saga for me, man. Um, it's it's a society. It's the old uh, Viking uh, times when they were at their height, 
And it's a, it's pretty much a society of people that fight for honor, glory, money, land, power, anything you can think of. But Thorkill, he just wants to throw hands and he does it fairly. Uh, I think one of his, I'd say manliest moments and most honorable moments, I think, were uh, when he was doing round two with Thorfinn, our main character, and he was interrupted. Sorry, Dan, for the, the spoilers, by the way. That's all good. But uh, he, uh, his henchmen interrupt the fight because he's about to get killed. And he turns around. He gets up off the ground, turns around, and cuts the guy in half and says, how dare you disgrace me like this? And it's like, Bro, what's your problem? He's like, you don't interrupt the man when he's fighting. This is about honor. This is about respect. And you took that from me and him. His own enemy. It's just, it's just fucking, I think he's, he's, that's who he is, bro. And like the first time you see him in the story, he's pretty much holding down a bridge, like an underpass on a bridge by himself against an entire army, smiling, throwing trees and boulders at them. Um, and then he soon gets into a fight with uh, Thorfinn. This is round one, by the way. And like I said, he just wants to fight. He does it with a smile on his face. Um, he's a loud guy, so he might not fit the uh, mysterious vibe for the hard boiled. But uh, <laughs> I think he's definitely a man. He's a man's man, like a hundred percent. He has the respect of all his men, and pretty much the, every every Viking looks up to him as the strongest Viking, and he never lets them down on this. Um, they always follow orders. They always respect this man. Damn, dude. I just looked up a picture of him. He is a big fucking guy. Yeah, Thor killed the tall, my boy. <laughs> I enjoy it. We'll get into his next uh, his next character later, but he has both sides of that spectrum pretty well covered. Yes, yes. Uh, I was looking for a little contrast uh, in this. But um, yeah, another one of my favorite moments is, is round one with Thorfinn. And you think when somebody is fighting someone and they get their fingers cut off, they'd be like, hold on, wait a second. This guy just uh, fucked me up pretty bad. He was like, I haven't had a fight this great in a long time. Let's go, man. Can you do it again? And it's just things like this where he's just like, this is a tough son of a bitch and he truly enjoys himself and he respects other people the way he does it um so very hard boiled to be and a hard ass as well so and what you got for us so for my first character i have potentially the self-proclaimed manliest man of anime so for my first character i have none other than kamina the leader of Team Dai Guren from Tengen Topa Guren Lagan, which is one of my favorite shows of all time. Kamino is just like a real man's man. There is no other way to put it. I think he says he just talks about being a man like half the time, and it's fucking awesome. That's like 70% of the words he says is yeah, is talking about being a man and uh damn it, Dan. You stole another one of mine. <laughs> I've, I've had Kamina in mind, but he, he got it down. Uh, he he hey. drafted him before me. So, you know, hey, man. Fair, fair is fair, but damn it. I was going to say, if you put him on the list, I would have been coming at you like, bro, that's like one of my favorite shows. Let me have my guy. I probably would have because I think you showed me Gurren Logan. So I, I did. I, <laughs> I definitely did. It was definitely a fun, very a intoxicated day. night. <laughs> that was this is a good day good day so i have just some fun facts about kamina i don't want to get in the story too much because i really want to make tyler watch this and i know he's going to listen so i can't divulge too many details but i do have some great lines from him and first off i'd like to start real manly men believe that shirts are overrated you don't need a shirt you got to show off that six-pack abs and that booming manly chest you know booming booming uh, there is a line that he says, and I think he would have really liked our first segment. The urge to stare at women is the definition of a man. I believe this comes at an episode where the hot spring. 
and they're trying to peek over the wall to the lady's hot spring. So let me tell you, he's a man's man. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's it's a it's a little creepy. Maybe he should have some like a uh, some darker glasses so he, you can't see his eyes. I think that'd help him out in his journey. Hey, man, he's like nineteen. It's all good. Yeah, it's all he's good. learning. He's learning. Um... But one thing with him is a real man should lead by example, and he is one of our main protagonists in the first half of the show and his influence on Simone, the other protagonist is clear as all day. He molds Simone from a little boy who lived underground into the man he becomes throughout the show. Uh, he never settles. He always pushes beyond. He's a guy who can clearly push past his limits. It has to happen, doesn't it? It has to happen. Okay. Okay. But with him, man, he has some of like the greatest speeches about being a man you'll ever find. With a man's soul and a strong back, go beyond the impossible and kick reason to the curb. A true man doesn't die even when he's killed. And one of his first signature attacks he does with Simone is the real spirit of man cannonball attack. And this is when he takes Simone's log on freaking... <laughs> Oh, yeah, that is right. Yes. <laughs> and just throws it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, real spirit of men, though. And dude, these quotes are bangers. He he has great he has great speeches. Um, and I, I also like coming in because he like he's he's a mentor. Like he's a manly man, but one of like the few like um, I think extremely manly men that are actually mentors in anime. Right. Definitely. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think he I, I I actually love his character. He carries this story sometimes. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, I can't say what I want to say, but he definitely leaves a lasting impression on the entire show and the entire cast of the show throughout it. He is yes. a leader by the most standard book definition you can find. And he's fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> he he really is though. He really is. Definitely, man. Well, who do you All got right. for your second one? So Levi, the short king, Ackerman. So this is what Dan was talking about when he said I, uh, I went with the exact opposite on my next one. So Thor killed the tall and the short king. So Levi, I, I, he might he's a little broken in some ways, but being regarded as humanity's strongest soldier, that's a little manly to me. That's not 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 saying a woman can't be the strongest soldier, but the way Eli pulls it off, I think, is the definition of being hard boiled. He rarely shows emotion. Um, he doesn't reveal too much about himself to the people around him, and people respect him for being strong and having good decision making. Big man shit, big man things. Uh, he I, I, there's one scene in particular. Um, that I'm thinking of is where he kind of just stomps out Aaron Yeager when they're putting him up to trial. I think after they figure out that he's a uh, a, uh, a Titan. I'm not spoiling anything. This is old, right? This, yeah, this you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And um, he kind of beats Aaron senseless, just stomping him out. And everybody in the room respected him so much no one got up and did anything about it. And Aaron's getting beaten so bad he can't fight back. And uh, I think that, that, that says a lot about Levi. But he, I think he's also, doing, if I remember correctly, he's doing it also to save Aaron. So That's exactly it. Yeah, they wanted to kill him. And he was basically like, nah, I got this guy under wraps. Don't worry about it. See, that it is beats right. the yes. shit out of him. Yeah, that's hard boiled. That, 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 that's it right there. That's it right there. Um. But he also cares about his soldiers and their lives. We see that when he's uh, fighting the female Titan in, in the woods there. He goes way out of his way to save many of his soldiers, but still is getting the job fucking done. That's what your boy does. Oh, um, definitely. Yeah, man. And, and then and, you... Uh, go ahead. I was going to say, you even think about in the season, the final season, part 17, final season, part whatever when he is in the woods with his crew, his team, and they all drank the wine. 
And he sits there and realizes that he should put down his team, put them in body bags because they'd rather be dead than be Titans, you know? Right. And that takes so much conviction, man. That is that is a fucking sign of a true manly man right there. Yeah. He just he just gets the job done, man. And and like you you get this. I think this is one of the first times of the first time we saw Levi was um I think it was was it the Battle of Trost or was that later in the show? It's been so long that I can't remember. Um, but uh, I think that was his intro. And everybody was struggling to, to defeat like individual titans, even grouped up together. And we see Levi come in immediately establish dominance he takes down multiple titans and like isn't flashy with it just out there doing his job you know being being cap levi and cool to care assessing the situation making sure everybody's okay man if levi ackerman isn't hard-boiled i don't know what is definitely so, dude that's what i got man Awesome. Well, so for my last one, I was I I wanted to pull somebody from the Jojo universe because Jojo's got some manly fucking men in it, especially with how they're animated. Those men have like 16 packs, booming chests. They're manly. (laughs) They're strong. Yeah. Barreling chest. Yes. But I was having a hard time between Jonathan, who is the protagonist in part two. And also he's in part three and Jotaro, who is the main character in Stardust Crusaders. But I eventually settled in on Jotaro because he's a fucking manly man, dude. I mean, when his stand first like appears, he thinks he's possessed by a demon and locks himself in jail. So he is not a danger to his friends and family. And that takes a lot of conviction right there. And there's scenes where, like, they're trying to get him to come out, and he's like, nope, d- can't do it. Steals a guy's gun, tries to shoot himself, and the stand catches the bullet. Like, shit goes hard. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 some real man shit right there. No joke. He also kills it with the ladies without even trying. Again, sign of a manly man, dude. You just, <laughs> everybody's he's just that guy. swooning over you, and you're just standing there going... That's cool. I don't really care. He's a little mysterious in that sense, you know? Mm-hmm. But he's kind of he's kind of guy who will never back down from a fight. He never loses composure when he's fighting. Even if he's against a challenging opponent, he figures out a way to beat them. And one thing he always does is he's there for his friends. His, the little uh, ragtag team they form in that arc. And he's just a character that you watch him and you just respect the shit out of him, you know? He's the for old sure, silent... Sure. The old silent but deadly kind of guy. A little mysterious, a little not not a not a big talker, but when push comes to shove, he's always there for his boys. And he's also always there for his family. So like if you if you guys have watched JoJo, you know it's all revol- revolving around the Joe Star family and all the random illegitimate children that uh Jonathan has when he cheated on his wife of like 60 years. So that's always fun. Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of why I didn't think he was very manly. A manly man wouldn't do that. No, no, that, that's not that's not real man shit right there. We don't do that. But he's always there for his family during their pursuit of Dio and his followers. And I mean, he is the one to take down the big baddie in Dio Brando. So like, whew, damn. Okay, that's impressive. I mean, that's a three gen that's a three to four generation struggle right there taking hey. down the man joe Turo and star platinum man, i had to step it up i mean i had to step up okay i see him i see him i you never you didn't watch you didn't get to that arc in jojo right like you just watched the no, first I definitely one did not. yeah oh stardust crusader is the best one dude you got to check it out okay man my backlog is so massive um we've watched so the starts of so many good shows on this podcast it uh, I never thought my anime backlog was gonna be this big. Is what uh, I'm gonna dude. say. My problem is, is that we do segments like this, and it makes me want to go rewatch shows. Yes. Like yes. I'm gonna be lying to you guys if I'm saying that I'm not gonna rewatch Current Logon at some point in the next month. It's 24 episodes. That's a wrap. I'll be <laughs> that all week. And it'll be a great fucking week. 
That is a great week. Yeah. Uh, Water 7 Innie's Lobby was a little longer. I think it took me about a month to get through, but fuck it. For Robin. <laughs> for for Robin. <laughs> for Robin. <laughs> um, uh. So my honorable mention was Vegeta uh, from Dragon Ball. I think he's honestly like a very man, like, you know, starts off as a, as a villain, but as a very manly person. Um, there's a lot, he, there's a lot of dialogue from him, but I think he tries to be a true Saiyan, a true one of his people is the prince of all Saiyans, all five of them. And um, I think he has the right spirit. This is why I didn't include him in my main list is because he has the right spirit, right? Um, he doesn't like to cry. Later in life, cares about his family. Um, it, 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 it's respectable. He has a lot of pride. An unhealthy amount, but it's there. But poor execution. Just poor execution at times. Yeah. I mean, you think back to the Majin Buu arc where he basically... I don't, I don't know what they call it. Not possessed, but... When he gets the M on his head. Yeah, I, it, Majin Vegeta, Vegeta it, that's, I don't know what else to call it. Yeah, when he gets his evil when awakened. Yeah, le, le, some uh, lending his power, yeah. And, uh, you know, you see him overcome that, and that is some manly-ass shit, dude. I mean, Vegeta is a great character. And, again, you know, you go back and watch some of the older arcs. Like, I just did a bunch, I just watched a bunch of Dragon Ball Z Kai. And just watching how much of a savage he was during the Frieza arc. Just like getting you forced yeah. down on the ground, and he's like, "Oh fuck, him. boom!" Just lays a beam <laughs> through the dome, you know? Like, yeah, going from that to what he is now, like he he's definitely way more respectable of a of a person. But I can't blame him though in that sense because, like, you think about it, and he, dog. that's exactly dog. it. That's after he learned that Frieza actually blew up his planet and did everything else, and he, there's a reason he is one of two full blood saiyans left in the world at this point i'd yes. be pissed off too man i'd be shooting laser beams through these fuckers done yeah completely understandable completely understandable uh beh behavior at that time but yeah he, i i think it's just execution is a little off at times he has too much pride i like the pride but it's too much it, a lot of the time oh um, definitely yeah, i think he's he's a, he's a great character um, oh. i think uh Goku gets misunderstood sometimes, especially by, by people that haven't watched Dragon Ball, like the the OG. But I mean, as far as character development, I think uh, Vegeta is, is is up there for this show. I mean, by Super Man, don't touch, don't touch his girl. That's how you Hell awaken nah. the beast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't whoa, slap whoa. my Bulma. <laughs> <laughs> And that was a great moment, honestly, to see that. I was like, man's all grown up. Look at him. A family man. Definitely, dude. And I guess for my honorable mention, I talked about his sister, but this is probably the most manly man in all of Full Metal Alchemist. We got to we gotta bring up Alice, our Alex Luis Armstrong. And we've just talked about a bunch of manly men that come in different forms. But big and muscular and gigantic is one of the most manly forms you can find. And he personifies <laughs> that to a T. But he's also, he's always there to motivate everybody else in the show. And he plays such a charismatic character. And I don't think the Elrics would have gotten where they were if it wasn't for his manly passion, you know? Yeah, man. He, he, he is like an uplifting force in that show. Even though he kind of does get put down by his sister Oliver. Uh, Olivier, times. Olivier, excuse me. I don't know why I said Oliver. I said that uh, earlier too. I think uh, um, I, I wasn't going to correct you once, but I'll get you the second time. <laughs> you had to spin back for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, I, I really like this character. I, like they, these, this brother and sister are like, like some of the best characters in the show. There's so many good characters, but uh, uh, Olivier is is amazing, and so is. Uh, uh, Mr. Armstrong here. It's great stuff. Great oh, stuff. Definitely, man. man. I really like your list, by the way, dude. Yeah. And he is like, the last thing I'll say is he is the one manly man that shows that it's okay to cry. So don't worry, Tyler. We got you. Nice. We found a manly man for you. 
<laughs> all shapes and forms all shapes and forms uh, hey man and you know what vegeta does cry at one point and all i can think of is the fucking uh team four star dub where he's sitting there banging his hands on the ground i want to be a super saiyan <laughs> you ever, have you ever seen this <laughs> no i haven't seen that holy shit as as big of a dragon ball z fan that you are man you gotta check out the team four star the um dbz abridged it is so fucking funny Okay, I gotta that's, check it out. Yeah, that's that's where Chiaotsu and the Pokeball comes from, dude. It is so stupid. It's funny. Oh, yeah, we have talked about that. Yeah, I need to go watch that too. So. Dude, there, there's a scene in the in the first Saiyan arc where you know Vegeta and Nava come down, and, and Vegeta's like, his power level is one thousand and six. Go beat him up, Nappa. And like Nappa just gets bodied by Goku, and it just goes back to Vegeta. Oh, sorry, I had my scouter on upside down. It's nine thousand and one. Great! It's so stupid, okay. dude. Okay, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, I might dude, have to go the, check that out. The abridged, all the abridged series on YouTube are hilarious. Like the Bleach one is too. Like they're so good sick but, sick yeah did not know i learned something tonight <laughs> you gotta check them out man but awesome guys we really appreciate you joining us for this week's bullshit hour a little shorter you know there's only two of us so go get your you got some free time this week guys enjoy it <laughs> make sure to uh join the discord check out our socials and more linktree.com slash anime djs and we'll catch you guys next tuesday for another episode of the rundown peace bye